you of the latest uh, higher ultra low temperature freezer that we've uh, just brought in. We're in the workshop here and we've unboxed it. But what we've got here is a 100 litre version of the um, of their minus 86 degree temperature freezer. Um, if I'll just go through some of the quick features that it has. Um, obviously a double locking door here, key lock and the facility to place a padlock there if you need it. Nice firm locking me mechanism on, on that. Um, nice multiple seals on the doors there. Two inner doors. Um, and 100 litre capacity there. Um, comes supplied with one shelf, but there is uh, the availability or the possibility to move the shelves up and down through a range of positions. It's very simple to operate. Um, just pop my glasses on. You can see on the display here. Currently, uh, it's got the locked light illuminated, which locks off any of the buttons from working and inadvertently changing any settings. It also displays uh, the current working temperature, the fact that it's running, that power is available, um, and there are no alarm conditions currently operating. It does have four built-in alarms, so a door alarm which will activate uh, if the door's been left open for more than five minutes. An over temperature alarm, obviously if it's warmer than the set temperature and the degree of difference between the alarm going off and the set temperature is something that's adjustable uh, as a user setting. I'll have a look at that in a moment. A low battery alarm, there's a battery backup system in it uh, where it will maintain the monitoring process as if the power is inadvertently um, cut off for whatever reason. Obviously the battery doesn't run the freezer, it merely maintains its monitoring. Um, and it has one other alarm for hot condenser, which is the, uh, the bit in here that lets the heat out. Um, typically that might happen because the inbuilt filter might be full of dust for example. The fans are running all the time so dust will be sucked through those. It's very simple to clean as you can see. Okay, so to make any adjustments we first have to get it out of the locked phase and into unlocked. Go into one of the adjustment uh, settings. So in this case to get it out of locked it's number six. So we just press move up to six then we hold the set button for five seconds and you'll see that the locked light will disappear in a moment like that so it's now unlocked and allows us to do any changes if I press set again we'll get the um, RS indicated there which is the the real setting that the it is set on if we press that again we can see it's now flashing to say it's at minus 80 degrees and that's the setting we're trying to achieve you can adjust it upwards and downwards obviously if you want to leave it at minus 78 you just press the set button and that will uh, lock it into that position as we can see you'll also notice that there if we toggle up one step there is a high level alarm and we would set that for whatever temperature that we require um, to be higher than the actual uh, our operating temperature um, to protect your samples or whatever may be in there and the same applies with a low level if the for whatever reason and the freezer drove down past your actual setting um, then this alarm would activate. You get back out of those, uh, you can just leave it for 30 seconds or so and that will automatically skip back out of the um, unlocked phase. In the event there is an alarm, what will happen is you'll get the audible sound, so a beeping, you'll get the alarm light on and you'll get one of the indicators there showing whatever fault the um, control has detected which you obviously take the appropriate action. The, uh, the facility to have the system remotely 
activated or remotely monitored is also around here where your, um, your laboratory monitoring system be, can be connected into a simple relay switch built behind these connectors. Um, and that way if the alarm occurs in the middle of the night and no one's in the lab, uh, this will send a signal to your remote monitoring system to advise you that there's something wrong with this freezer. Mm. In this particular model, it won't tell you what the fault is. You still have to look at the front of the freezer to see that. On other models within the higher range, it's quite possible to send an actual piece of data that says what the fault is with the freezer. There is, around this side, there is an access port built in with a plug on it so that you can put your own internal uh, probes through there for any other independent monitoring that you might want. This has merely got a piece of tape on it because it's brand new packaging. On the front of the system here we have a USB port where you can um, download the operating um, history of the freezer for whatever designated period. You can also um, tell, tell it in the programming how often that you want it to take a temperature reading. And that might be every hour, every minute, whatever the case might be. Obviously the more recordings you take, the more data and memory that's used uh, in the process. Okay, well thanks for watching this video. Uh, if you're interested in um, getting some more information about higher ultra low temperature freezers, be sure to visit our website. Um, so you can either Google Row Scientific or you can go straight to www.row.com.au. More information is available on the website or you can call your account manager if uh, you're already a client of ours. Thank you.